How's it going my bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode of the principles of baking, we'll do some cold fermentation tests. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Cold fermentation has been my go-to method lately. It's convenient, it's easy and produces great results. Usually I leave my dough in the fridge for about 12 to 24 hours. But lately I thought, how long could I leave it in there for? And if I did leave my dough in the fridge for a long time, how would that fermentation time affect the end result? That's what we're going to find out today. We'll make four breads, all containing the same ingredients. White flour, whole wheat flour, yeast, salt and water. The only difference between them is the amount of yeast used and the fermentation time. One will be fermented for two weeks, the other one for seven days, the next one for five days and the final one for two days. I'm not going to knead the dough, I'm not going to fold the dough. I'm just going to mix it and pop it in the fridge and forget about it. We'll start with the oldest one. And then we'll pull out the previous one or the previous ones out of the fridge before we mix the next one. Just to see how they are progressing over time. They'll always be in the same order from left to right. 14 days, 7 days, 5 days and 2 days. As always, this is not a recipe video. I'm not going to talk you through the steps here. Instead, while you watch me make the breads on screen, I'll talk about how fermentation time affects bread dough. I will of course stop once in a while to talk about what's going on in the video, if there's anything noteworthy there. So just to start off, I finish mixing the 14 day old dough, we pop it in the fridge and leave it in there. This is what it looks like after 7 days. We'll check it out and then we'll mix the next one. And I'm sure you get the idea by now. They will all be baked on the same day. There are two main things affected by fermentation, flavor and gluten. The longer the fermentation, the more intense the taste. But also the longer the fermentation, the weaker the gluten structure, as a result of increased acidity. How long we choose to ferment our bread dough for will dictate the balance of the two. You want great flavor, we also want your dough to keep its shape. Usually we think of fermentation as one process, while there are a lot of things happening inside the dough, and it depends on the temperature. It's especially important because we are cold fermenting right now. There's fermentation and there's respiration. Respiration happens at higher temperatures and at the presence of oxygen. So that will normally be bread dough that is kneaded and is fermented at room temperature or higher. The byproducts of respiration are carbon dioxide and water. Flour contains enzymes that convert starches to sugars, which the yeast feeds on. And the byproducts of this process are CO2 and water. It is the gas that builds up inside the dough and makes it rise. The greatest amount of gas production happens at higher temperatures. Perhaps the greatest example of this is oven spring. While it can give the bread huge volume, it does not give it much flavor. Now alcoholic fermentation happens at lower temperatures and in the absence of oxygen. So that will be your cold fermented no need bread. And that's exactly what we're making right now. During alcoholic fermentation, yeast produces carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is alcohol. Bacteria and acids are also produced. They are responsible for flavor and structure development. Starch will be converted to sugar in moist and acidic environments through a process called hydrolysis. It is the acids that continue processing the starch, while the enzymes slow down at cooler temperatures. Yeast activity and carbon dioxide production slows down whilst fermentation continues as a result of the multiplication of acids and bacteria. Usually when we talk about acids and bacteria, we think of sourdough bread. And when it comes to sourdough bread, it is the acids and the bacteria which are responsible for both CO2 production and flavor development. When it comes to commercial yeast dough, the acids and bacteria account for a lot less of CO2 production and they only really affect the flavor profile at cold fermentation temperatures. Organic acids affect the dough in a few interesting ways. They make the dough more acidic, producing a more intense flavor. They help along with gas production. They make the dough more extensible. They strengthen the gluten and help the dough retain more gas. I know it seems funny as I say that, handling this 14-day fermented dough, which looks like a wet sock. It is so loose and stretchy and it tears so easily. That is because acidity only helps the gluten up until a point. When a dough comes near or drops below a pH of 3, gluten degrades rapidly and yeast activity slows down considerably. But even so, shaping this dough a couple of times, I could build some strength into it and it wasn't at all unworkable, so I wouldn't call this a big problem in this case. Obviously on screen right now we have a 14 day fermented dough and a 7 day fermented dough. I'll shape them up, leave them for the final proof, then bake them. I'll leave them to cool down whilst I bake the other two. The only reason why I'm not baking them all at once is because I don't have 4 tins of the same size. And as you saw, I pulled the 7 day fermented dough and it tore quite easily. It is also quite loose and stretchy, but not nearly as loose and stretchy as the other one. It was quite easy to shape it up and make it nice and tight. It is not only the acidity and the long fermentation time, but also the fact that I didn't knead or fold these doughs. That is why they are all so loose. Okay, these are shaped up. Let's clean down the mess real quick. I'm going to continue baking and we can talk about something else that happens at low temperature. 
When the dough is cold fermented, its temperature drops down so low that the yeast becomes dormant. Whilst the yeast is in a slumber, sugars are still being produced through hydrolysis. Because the yeast is basically inactive, the sugars remain in the dough unfermented. And this is until the temperature starts increasing, after the dough is taken out of the fridge for the final proof or for baking. As soon as the temperature increases, the yeast will start consuming those sugars and multiplying at an accelerated rate. This will make the dough fill up with gas and rise up, be it during the final proof or during oven spring. The yeast will start dying off at around 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The remaining sugars in the dough will leave it tasting sweeter and they will make the crust caramelize, resulting in a richer color. So in short, respiration is mainly responsible for dough volume, whilst fermentation is more responsible for flavor. That's why cold fermented bread tastes so much better. It takes the advantage of both processes. It is the balance between the two that gives our bread a great rise and awesome flavor. That's what I think what I know so far. I hope I didn't get nothing wrong. I'm sure Kevin will help me out here in the comments below. By the way, don't forget to read the blog post on my website. It contains all the things that I talked about here and sometimes more. Okay, enough of the science. Let's get back to the practical applications. Currently, I'm shaping the 5-day fermented and the 2-day fermented doughs. They're quite loose, quite stretchy, but totally manageable. The 5-day fermented one is slightly looser, but not by much. The first three doughs reach their peak in the fridge in about 5 days. As soon as they hit the lid of the container, they collapse back down and then kept rising back up for another couple days. They never reach the same volume. Instead, they rise a bit, fall down again, rise again, fall down again. As the fermentation runs out of steam and as the gluten starts weakening, there is not much gas production and the little gas that is produced escapes through holes in the dough. The two-day fermented dough contained the most yeast. It almost doubled in size in two days. That is of course when we took it out of the fridge, shaped it, let it rise and baked it, which I'm doing right now. I guess you could say technically, that's the only correctly made dough here because it did not rise too much and burst. But then again, who cares about technicalities? Clearly, all four doughs produce a loaf of bread. Even the 14-day fermented one could be shaped into a loaf. Okay, all the breads are ready. It's time to compare them. They're still in the same order from left to right. 14 days, 7 days, 5 days and 2 days. The 2, 5 and 7-day fermented ones look quite like each other. Except that the 5-day fermented one burst open at the side. But that's most likely my fault. The one that stands out here is the 14-day fermented one. It has a different color and it looks a bit funny. It's a bit wrinkly and it did not gain much volume. And I guess when I'm an old man, someone will throw that description right back at me. Then again, as we mature, we get better. And that is the same story with the bread here. While the 14 day fermented one is the odd one out, it smells absolutely amazing. And I quite like the color too. It's nice and even all over the surface. And there is no doubt that will have a very interesting flavor. Looking at them from the side, we can see that the 7 day, 5 day and 2 day fermented loaves have gained pretty much the same volume. But let's cut them open and see what they look like inside. And again, the 14 day fermented one is the odd one out. It has the darkest crumb color. And you can already see how dense it is. It smells nice and strong and acidic. But it is not overpowering because it also has a nice sweet smell to it. And that's of course because of all the sugar. The 7 day fermented bread smelled a lot milder. There was definitely a progression between them. From 14 to 7 to 5, they smelled less and less acidic. There was not a huge difference between the 5 day fermented one and the 2 day fermented one. And of course I'm coming back to the fact that the 14 day fermented one is the odd one out. Because there is not much of a difference between the 7 day fermented one and the 5 day fermented one. Or the 5 day fermented one and the 2 day fermented one. I could only tell more of a difference between the 7 day fermented one and the 2 day fermented one. Whilst the 14 day fermented one was far stronger than all of them together. It had the toughest texture, it had the crispiest crust, and it had the strongest taste. The 7, 5 and 2 day fermented breads were a lot milder. They had some acidity and also a bit of sweetness, but nothing like the 14 day fermented one. I really hope all of that made sense. I guess what I'm trying to tell you here is that if you want a punch of flavor, then don't ferment your dough for one day longer. Leave it for 4 days longer, 5 days longer. Just don't forget to adjust the amount of yeast. Now I can't tell you exact numbers. We use different yeasts, all of our fridges have different temperatures, the best you can do is experiment. Take your regular cold fermented bread, reduce the yeast by half and then leave it in the fridge for 4 or 5 days and see what happens. Check its progress every day, see how it changes and then decide when to bake. I can't tell you how long to ferment your dough for and I can't tell you what tastes good and what doesn't. Taste is subjective. I don't mind eating that 14 day fermented bread. It tastes great to me, while it could be totally inedible to you. But I have shown you what is possible. And you could certainly leave your dough in the fridge for more than two weeks even. I'll leave those experiments up to you. 
So what has been the longest time that you have fermented your dough in the fridge for? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.